Hey there, and welcome to part two. In this section, we're gonna be covering this photo we see in front of us, and uh, let's go ahead and get started kind of outlining the things we're gonna to do to this photo. So we can see here on the right side of the image, we've got a lot of like really nice shine in the hair. It just looks beautiful, and I, uh, I wanna replicate that as well as I can over here in the left. Now, this is real actual light hitting the hair on the right side, and on the left side, what I'm gonna be doing is Photoshop which is never as good as just real actual light because this affects every single hair and anyway, <laughs> we're gonna do the best job we can, but obviously you always wanna get the real thing um, if you can. So we're gonna be taking care of shadows and highlights as well as some color and we're gonna be pulling some hair out using the liquify, liquify tool. I'm also gonna show you how to darken, there we go, things like eyebrow and eyelash hair. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and get into it. First thing I would like to do is duplicate my background layer, Controller Command J to duplicate that. And then we're gonna open up our liquify dialog. And just like we did in the last section, this time I'm not trying to shape the hair so much, more just like um, pull it out a little bit. I want the hair to look a little bit bigger because it, it's one of those photos that kind of lends itself to bigger hair. So why not make the hair a bit bigger? It's just kind of fun. Beautiful. And if you want to go in here and like play with the curls and stuff like that to kind of exaggerate them, you can definitely go in and, and do that sort of thing. There we go. Just try to, you know, you don't want something that looks like that because obviously hair doesn't do that. So, you know, don't go crazy overboard with it, but if you can get something that looks pretty natural, um, yeah, why not, right? All right, let's pull this out there. Pull that in there. All right. Cool, all right, that looks actually pretty nice. Let's push that in there. I wanna avoid any kind of like straight lines in the hair. You know, we want like nice, even flowing curves. All right, beautiful. All right, push that in a little bit and kind of pull that out. I think it looks great. Push that in, kind of pull that out. Kind of just playing with curves, the curls of the hair and stuff like that. Beautiful. All right, cool, let's go ahead and let's exaggerate this a little bit less. All right, let's hit okay there. All right, so there's the before and the after with the hair. Just an excuse to make hair a little bit bigger and wavier. I love it. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer and we're gonna to go to solid color. Let's just choose this red. As of now, it doesn't really matter what color we choose. We're gonna change it later. All right, we're gonna change our layer blend mode from normal to overlay. There we go, and you can see it still looks horrible, but no worries, it won't in a minute. I'm gonna hit Control or Command I on the layer mask to invert my layer mask. And then we're gonna paint white all over here on top of the hair. All right, looking good. So now that we have this red color overlaid on top of our hair, maybe we want this effect just the highlights of the hair. So let's double click here, all right? And here in our blend if, I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and move from the left to the right to where we're just affecting the highlights of the hair. All right, and we're gonna hit OK. So now we can see we're just affecting the highlights. So we've got a solid color, which is just that red. It's painted over the hair and it's just affecting the highlights. So now my goal is to take the color and start altering it to something that actually reflects what's going on with the rest of the hair, which is actually not too incredibly difficult. There we go. Just kind of choosing the right, and you don't have to get it perfect, but like that looks too green. That looks too red, obviously. All right, so your hue, you can just use the up and down arrows to get that where you want it to go. All right, same with your saturation. You can hit the up and down arrows like this is more saturated. This is less saturated. All right, hue, I think get a little bit more yellow kind of match. All right, and then the brightness, you can go up and down with this too. All right, let's hit okay. That looks like a pretty decent match there. 
Cool. Now I'm going to double click on here and tell this to be visible a little bit less there. All right, and hit OK. And now with my layer mask, I'm just going to paint white on my layer mask in some of the areas where the hair is looking just a little bit dull. All right, there we go. So now we have that on our hair, which definitely helps to match everything. We'll bring the opacity down just a little bit. All right, let's do that again. I'm gonna grab a solid color adjustment layer. Let's choose red again, doesn't really matter. Change our color from normal, sorry, our blend mode from normal to overlay again. And we're gonna go ahead and separate this out. And then this time I only really want it to be visible on just like the high, highest of the highlights, okay? All right, let's go ahead and use the same layer mask from this layer to this one. To do that, just hold the Alt or the Option key and click from one layer mask to another one. It's gonna ask you to replace the layer mask and we're gonna say yes. There we go. Now it's just visible in the highest of the highlights. So our job now is to, again, change our color. We want this super bright, but not too saturated because that's what that looks like. So just kind of working out All right, there we go. Let's hit okay. We'll turn this off and then back on. All right, and if we want the visible a little bit more, we can definitely have that. You know what? I think this could come down in saturation a little bit. There we go. All right, let's turn those off and back on. I'm gonna lower the opacity of that one there just a little bit. Okay, now let's say we wanted to add red undertones. Well, you know what? I'm just gonna duplicate this layer. Okay, now this time, let's double click on here. And I don't wanna affect the highlights, I wanna affect the shadows. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from the right side to the left now. So I'm gonna tell it not to affect the highlights, just the shadows. And hit okay. So now we have color coming into the shadows. All right, and if we want to change that color, it's as simple as changing that color. So if we wanted some like nice deep red to kind of show up in the shadows, we could do that pretty dang easily. All right, and this we're gonna have visible over the whole entire head there. All right, let's double click on here, maybe make it a little bit less visible. All right, there we go. That's a little bit of red coming into the shadows there. So we have from here to here, we can see our hair is a lot more vibrant and I think it looks really, really good. All right, this one we'll do a little bit less saturated here. Saturation will just go down. To... There we go. All right, beautiful. So next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and darken those areas. So we're actually just, you know what? I'm kind of on a solid color kick. I don't use these, these same techniques with every single image I do, by the way. Every, pretty much every image requires like a slightly different technique, but the solid color seems to be working really well. So we'll just continue to use this. I'm gonna change my layer blend mode now from normal down to multiply, which is gonna make things a little bit darker. We're gonna double click here and I'm gonna tell this to not be visible where the underlying layer is lighter. I just want it to be visible where the underlying layer is darker. All right, let's hit okay there. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna hit Control or Command I on the layer mask and we're just gonna paint in white over top of the areas like the eyebrows. And because we're only affecting the darker areas, this is not gonna show up over top of things like the skin. It's just gonna show up over the darker areas. I mean, the darker areas of the skin will show up, but the lighter areas you can see, it's not showing up, which is really, really nice. All right, so we've darkened up the eyebrows and the eyelashes a little bit there. 
Um, now we just have to find the right color. So that was well too saturated. Let's just lower down the saturation there. We can make the darker if we want. We can make it lighter if we want. All right, and let's go ahead and match that in tone to the rest of the eyes. A little less saturated. And there we go, a little darker as well. And I think a little less saturated. All right, and if that's too much, simply double click here and bring this slider that way, which affects less of the area. If it's still too much, you can always lower the opacity as well. That's a quick, easy way to signal out just the hair on someone's face and either make it lighter or darker. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and look at the before and the after with this one. So here's our before, let's zoom out there, and the after. That's awesome. So, so cool. I love what we did with the color of the hair there. All right. Cool, let's pump on to our next image here. There we go. And this one we're gonna start in a similar way with a little bit of shaping. All right, so controller command J to duplicate it. And then shift command X will give us our liquify tool. So what I'm gonna do is start from the inside and kind of pull out here. There we go. And then from the outside, I'm gonna push in to get my flyaway hairs a little bit closer to the head. All right, and then this bun, I think could just be shaped a little bit more interestingly. And kind of pull that up there a little bit as well. I'm gonna pull that hair this way and pull this hair that way. Ooh, you know what? That does not look real at all. So what we're gonna do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and lower the pressure a little bit. So not as much as affected. And I'm just gonna do this like little by little. All right, so there we are, shaping some hair. Let's hit OK. Check the before and the after. Wow, super cool. All right, now we're gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna hit J again for my spot healing brush tool. And we're gonna paint away all these flyaways here that are just kind of distracting. Go. We'll get rid of that as well. And get rid of this stuff on her skin too. Same tool. Content aware heal. You are my hero. I love you. Now all these other like little flyaways and things like that, like I'm not too concerned with removing like every single one of these things, like you know, all this. Cause it, it helps hair look real. I mean, without that stuff, honestly, hair wouldn't look like hair if the edge is like too well defined or whatever. Um, so I'm not worried about all this stuff around the edge. I mean, I'm just um here we go. We're not gonna we're not gonna worry about taking that off. All right. Now we do have a little bit of like 
color kind of weirdness going on there. Um, so let's just grab the same technique we did earlier, solid color. We're going to hit OK, change our layer blend mode to overlay here. Hit Command or Control I on my layer mask. And now we're just going to paint white right there. Okay, and now we're going to choose our color by double clicking there. All right, we want our hue to come up a little bit, our saturation to come down a little bit, and that darkness down a little bit too. There we go, that's much better, right? Kind of like gets rid of that weird coloration. And this is so easy because you just you just start with you know whatever you just start with red or green or whatever, and you just slowly adjust your color till it it fits in there. So it's it really is quite easy to color correct. That sort of thing. All right, beautiful. That looks great. And you know, you could go in there and clean up a little bit more if you wanted. You know what? I'll show you how to pen tool this area here. That'll be good. So let's create a new layer. Um, we're going to use our pen tool now. If you're unfamiliar with the pen tool, check out on flurn.com. Just type in pen tool into the search. There is a free episode on how to use the pen tool. It's really easy to use. Basically, what I'm going to do is click and drag along the line of her neck. So we're going to click and drag here. Okay, if you need to move any of these points, just hold the control or the command key. And basically what this does is creates a path that you can then turn into a selection. So that's our path. I'm going to right click and say make selection. We're going to feather this by about two pixels. Okay. And then on a new layer, we can just clone stamp from the inside or the outside in rather. I'm going to hit Control or Command H to hide my selection temporarily. There we go. So we can see making a selection real quick out of that area and then just removing the hair. Super easy to do. And if you wanted to add a little bit more realism here, what you could do is just grab a clone stamp tool. Okay, clone stamp that on a new layer. Change this from normal down to something like lighten. All right, and then do something like that. And then we have instant realism. I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and click on my layer mask to make my layer mask invisible. And then we have just a little bit of frizz right there, which helps make that transition look a lot more real. All right, so there we have uh, removing all that like neck hair and stuff like that. Okay, looking great. Let's take a look at our before and the after. All right, here is our before and the after. Just with hair, guys. <laughs> Pretty incredible. All right, cool. That's the end of this photo. We'll see you in the next section.